As we saw earlier, there are basically just two things that can go wrong with heat exchangers. One of these is blockage, and leakage is the other. In this part of the program, we'll take a look at the first one of these maintenance problems, blockage. We'll examine the problem in two ways. First, we'll talk about the various routines you'll be using to clean large surface heat exchangers. And second, we'll see some automatic methods of cleaning that are used to slow down a buildup of the things that stop up a heat exchanger. Now, depending on what fluids go through a particular heat exchanger, it's pretty easy to know just what to expect when you open up a unit after a long period of service. When our mechanic got the work order to open and inspect the main condenser on number 12, he knew pretty much what he was going to find. He planned the job accordingly. He chose the necessary cleaning tools as well as his personal protective gear. Once the unit was opened up and the air quality check told him the air was safe inside, all it took was a quick inspection to confirm his judgment. What a mess. Oh well, it could have been a lot worse. The unit had been in service for quite a while, and in all that time, this was all that had accumulated inside. Well, the first thing to do is suit up and go inside. Our worker's got to be careful of his footing in that water box. The surfaces in there are very slippery. The last thing he wants to do is fall and take a bath in that stuff, or hurt himself. Scraping the tube sheet and picking things out of the ends of the tubes just requires patience to get it all. It really doesn't matter whether he cleans the tube sheets first or shovels out the water box. It's all got to go. But if the stuff in the water box isn't downright hazardous, it's more practical to clean the tube sheets first. Why clean the water box twice? Cleaning the tube sheets is made easier with the use of wire picks to get to the inside of the tubes with the most junk stuck into them. Be sure to use care, though. Some tubes are made of soft metal, and you could damage them. Bristle or wire brushes may be used later to get any slime accumulation from the face of the tube sheet. Once the tube sheet's been picked clean, our workers make a sort of two-man bucket brigade, passing all the crud out and dumping it for disposal. Shooting the tubes involves the use of a high-pressure water gun like this one. Depending on the kind and amount of garbage that's blocking the tubes, the mechanic may do the job one of four ways. If there's only mud or silt accumulated inside the tubes, he may just use a stream of water from the gun. Sometimes a gun like this may have a fitting that allows pumping in compressed air to turn stubborn accumulation off the walls of the tubes. A second method he might use is rubber squeegees that just fit inside the tubes. These are forced through the tubes by the stream of water. They remove slime or soft deposits from the tube walls better than water, or water and air do. The third thing used to shoot tubes is a tight-fitting wire brush with rubber plugs at both ends. The rubber plug pushes the brush through on the stream of water from the gun. The plug that goes through first clears any soft deposits, while the brush removes harder deposits and scale. The fourth item he could use is for really heavy hard deposits on strong tube materials, such as stainless steel. This bullet is a finned scraper, which will scrape loose chemicals and corrosion deposits even wire brushes won't remove. In this case, the worker is using brushes to shoot the tubes. He inserts a bunch of them at one time into a section of tubes. He may do several hundred at once. When they're all placed in the tubes, he shoots them through one at a time with the same high-pressure water gun he uses when just shooting the tubes with water. It's really important to make sure no one's in the other water box. The force of the rushes coming through could hurt someone pretty bad. After he's done with one group of tubes, a helper will collect the bullets from the water box at the other end. While he's doing this, our mechanic places another bunch of bullets into the next group of tubes and signals his helper when he's ready to shoot them. Communications with everyone are really important, so no one will get hurt. To shoot the tubes, all he has to do once the bullets are in place is to hold the nozzle of the water gun firmly in the mouth of each tube and pull the trigger. He can feel the water pressure, and he can tell by this feel when the bullet has gone through and out the other end of the tube. Now, occasionally, the worker is going to find that a tube is blocked so badly that a bullet won't clear it. When this happens, he's going to get wet. This is why he's kept his rain suit on and why he's wearing safety glasses while he's performing this chore. Chemicals in the deposits or in the water could be harmful. In order to get all the tubes in the condenser 
or any big shell and tube heat exchanger, it'll take a fair amount of time to go through this process over and over again, a bunch at a time. Now the basic job's not much different on a large shell and tube heat exchanger. In the case of this large heater, shooting the tubes was done with high pressure water and compressed air, and that was good enough to remove the small amounts of scale that were in the tubing. Although the tools and implements are pretty much the same as the ones we saw the mechanic using on the condenser, one thing you have to think about with a U-tube heat exchanger is what you shoot the tubes with. Longer bullets or brushes can get hung up in the bend in the tubes. When the outsides of the tubes need to be cleaned, it's necessary to pull the tube bundle out of the heater. This flange is separated and tracks and slides or rollers are provided inside the shell to allow the tube bundle to be pulled out. When the tubes are out in the open, you can wire brush scale away. In oil heaters, if you have to get all the oil off the tubes for any reason, you can use solvents made for that purpose. Now, once all the tubes are cleared, and when water boxes or headers are clean, the next job at hand is finding and plugging leakage. Before we follow on to the next step, though, we'd like to take a look at a couple of other ways of keeping shell and tube heat exchangers clean. One mechanical method some plants use is sort of like the snake a plumber uses to clean out your home plumbing. A rotating set of blades on the end of a cable is fed through the tubes in a heat exchanger to remove very tough, scaly deposits. Like the scrapers used in shooting tubes, this method of cleaning is usually reserved for the toughest cleaning jobs on tubes of strong material. In addition to these do-it-yourself methods, there are some automatic systems for keeping condensers and shell and tube heat exchangers clean. Now, these automatic systems fall into two categories. The first is mechanical cleaning, and the second is chemical cleaning. Automatic mechanical cleaning systems are found in many plants that utilize river or ocean water for cooling water in condensers and other heat exchangers. A common system circulates rough sponge balls through the tubes and collects them to be pumped back through. The use of these automatic systems cuts down on the need for periodic cleaning where fresh, clean water can't be used in a heat exchanger. Chemical cleaning systems automatically chlorinate the incoming cooling water to kill and prevent algae growth. The collection of slime on the inside of tubes and on tube sheets is reduced, and this keeps cleaning jobs to a minimum. Altogether, the methods we've examined in this part of the program, manual and automatic, are typical of the cleaning methods used in the plant. These methods are the methods used for larger shell and tube heat exchangers and for surface condensers. A little later in the program, we'll examine smaller shell and tube heat exchanger maintenance, but before we do, we'll look at maintenance practices to plug leaks in larger heat exchangers. For the time being, pause and read section three of your text and answer the questions. Your instructor will discuss the methods used in your plant to keep larger surface heat exchangers clean. Make sure you have a good understanding of these methods and ask your instructor to clear up any questions you may have.